Hello everyone, and welcome to the introduction to Azure Data Services. My name is Tegan Riffat, and I'm currently fortunate enough to be working at Microsoft as a partner technology strategist. My hope by the end of this session is that we will have a greater appreciation and understanding of the broad spectrum of capabilities on offer from various database technologies, IoT, machine learning, and more. When we think of the environment that we currently find ourselves in, we have an increasing number of organizations that are looking to adopt or execute against a cloud-first strategy. We are having to contend with data in a variety of formats, with overall volumes growing at an exponential rate. And we are seeing accelerating levels of interest and investment in areas such as AI. And it is the combination of these three core ingredients where we are able to ingest data at scale from any source of any format into a unified data estate where we have access to essentially limitless compute, limitless storage, and modern analytic capabilities, where we're able to then use AI to reason over that data in order to unlock those deeper, more meaningful insights. It is those organizations that will be well positioned to capture a competitive edge. If we take a step back, the data to action journey follows a fairly typical pattern. We start on the left-hand side with data of a variety of formats, unstructured data such as media files like images, video, and audio, semi-structured data such as JSON documents that might be received from a web API, or structured information such as relational data that we may be more familiar with, stored in rows and columns, being written from a line of business application. The data then must be ingested from these various sources and persisted for later retrieval within a data store. Once in storage, we can leverage various analytic capabilities to perform transformations, draw insights, and ultimately visualize and surface to be actioned. Scattered across this diagram, you'll notice that we have a variety of Azure services that sit across these buckets. Drilling in further on the Azure services themselves, while this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch, it is a good representation of some of the fundamental building blocks that comprise a modern cloud-based data solution. Some of these components such as Power BI you may be more familiar with, and others such as Azure Synapse Analytics and Cosmos DB, potentially less so. In this section, we are going to step through each logical grouping with the aim to demystify the services down to their core purpose as to when and where they may be used. Working our way from the bottom, starting with the Azure Data Catalog. Within a data estate, we typically have various data stores from all different types of vendors. Within these data stores, we find schemas. Within those schemas, we find tables and views. And within those tables and views, we typically find columns that describe the data. It is this descriptive data about the data, which we refer to as metadata. The Azure Data Catalog is a fully managed cloud service that enables us to capture, annotate, and search this metadata across the enterprise to aid self-service data source discovery. The way in which we can think about this is dock it, or document it. Next up, we have Azure Data Factory, which can orchestrate the movement of data from source A to destination B. Whether that be on premises to cloud, between clouds like AWS to Azure, or within Azure itself between services, for example, moving data between the Azure Data Lake to Azure SQL Database. This activity can also encompass the calling of computational services like Azure Databricks or a stored procedure within Azure Synapse Analytics to transform the data within the overall pipeline. This is commonly referred to as ETL, Extract Transform Load, or ELT, Extract Load Transform. And the way in which we can think about this is move it. Event Hub and IoT Hub these are our real-time data ingestion services with the latter having extended functionality to cater for IoT unique requirements such as bi-directional communication. 
Say, for example, we are working with a large water utility company who has deployed a fleet of IoT devices across their pipe network in an effort to proactively identify leaks before they happen. If we are to zoom in on a singular IoT device, attach just one of these pipes, which is generating data via sensors, such as water pressure. That packet of data in and of itself may be quite small. At a particular point in time, the water pressure is 85%. But as we start to step back and realize the frequency in which we will need to be logging and capturing this data, the multitude of devices logging that information across the entire pipe network, multiplied by the number of sensors beyond water pressure in which we are looking to capture, such as soil moisture, temperature, and more, we can quickly scale to thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of events per second. This is where big data streaming platforms such as Event Hub and IoT Hub step in to act as the initial point of ingestion. The way in which we can think about these components is bring it. Data Lake Store and Azure Storage, these are our general purpose data stores. Scalable by design to exabytes of data, are cost effective and can store data of any type. With Data Lake in particular having extended functionality such as hierarchical namespaces, making it perfectly suited to big data and analytic workloads. We can think of this layer as store it. Azure SQL Database, Azure Synapse Analytics, and Cosmos DB. These are our different types of data stores catering for both SQL and NoSQL workloads. While you may be thinking that there is overlap with data lake store and storage in the basic sense that these components also do store data, you will typically find that these types of components serve something, whether that be the underpinning of a line of business application, serving data to enterprise reporting, or servicing data for a web API. With that in mind, I like to think about this layer as serve it. HD Insight, Azure Databricks, and Data Lake Analytics. These are our big data analytics platforms with support for open source distributed computing frameworks, such as Apache Spark. While there are various reasons why you might choose one technology over the other, the ability to process large volumes of data involves the spinning up of computing clusters to leverage the benefits of parallel processing. The way in which we can think about this layer is scale it. Stream analytics. When we think about real-time streaming, while we may leverage components such as event hubs and IoT hub to act as the initial point of ingestion, we may want to query the data as we receive it in real time. Think of a new bank startup who are streaming and ingesting credit card transactions as they occur and would like to implement an example of fraud detection. For instance, if two credit card transactions occur within a certain period of time, but the physical distances between those two locations where the transactions occurred are impossible to travel in the elapsed time, we want to raise an alert. This is where stream analytics can be used to express business logic in the form of SQL statements to query the data as it is being ingested. The way in which we can think about this layer is stream it. Machine learning and cognitive services. These capabilities enable AI at scale from pre-built models that require no machine learning experience across a variety of domains such as language, speech, and vision to highly specialized environments to empower data scientists to achieve more. The way in which we can think about this layer is predict it. And last but not least with Power BI. While we can ingest data, persist it in storage, move and serve it, reason over it with AI, we ultimately need to see it. Hopefully by now, you'll have a better understanding of the various building blocks available to us in Azure to compose a modern cloud-based data solution. That's not to say that each and every one of these technologies will be required 
to cater for your project requirements as your mileage may vary depending on the specific scenario you are looking to facilitate. That said, we can ground ourselves in the common pattern we see in modern data warehouse. Ingest, store, prep, serve, and report. Here is an example of some usual suspects that can be used to facilitate such a pipeline. Using Azure Data Factory to copy data from our on-premises environment and persisting that data in Azure Data Lake Store. Using Azure Databricks to wrangle, transform, and enrich our data on a collaborative Apache Spark-based analytics platform before loading our prep data into Azure Synapse Analytics to be queried and served by our enterprise dashboards and reports via Power BI. So if you're interested in learning more about Azure and getting hands-on with the technology, simply head on over to Microsoft Learn. All content is free and available on demand so that you can learn at your own pace. With material catering for beginners all the way up to experienced professionals. There is also gamification along the way with badges and trophies waiting to be unlocked. To get started, visit aka.ms learn.